Ladies and gentlemen, yes, after a prolonged cold rain and sleeping sun, time has come to welcome, embrace, and celebrate the spirit of spring. I tapos bishash and kosturi guho, on behalf of Vancouver Tigger Society, welcome you all to join us to our annual multicultural event, Tagore Spring Festival 2017. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, we share the spirit of spring with you all through live music, poetry, and dance. Just before we begin our show, a small reminder, during the performances, please no still photography or flash photography, and please, those who haven't done it, so please keep your cell phone either switched off on or in the silent mode. Now, I would like to invite Bernice Lever, Vice President of Vancouver Tagore Society, for her welcome speech on behalf of the Vancouver Tagore Society and to recite her poetry. Bernice is a prize-winning poet with 10 books of poetry published so far, a freelance editor and workshop leader. She's active in many organizations including the League of Canadian Poets, World Poetry, and Canadian Authors Association. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Bernice Lever. I'll, 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 I'll just wave with the lighting. Uh, there's no one out there, it's all black. <laughs> Welcome, it is my honor as the Vice President of the T Vancouver Tagore Society to warmly welcome our charming, supportive audience to our Tagore Spring Festival. It's wonderful to see the house filling up with friendly people. President <clears throat> Dr. Lee Tan and Secretary Duke Ashraf Usman are not able to attend this evening, but they send their greetings to you. Vancouver Tagore Society has many to thank for all the generosity, time, and energy that it took to create this evening's festival. I'll begin with much appreciation to the City of Surrey for the Cultural Project Grant that is the prime enabler of this festival. Our gratitude for the City for their confidence in the Vancouver Tagore Society for these three years in a row. Many thanks to those who have given in-kind support. And there's a list of very uh, fine people. I think they're on the bottom of your program. So thanks to Shaw Multicultural Channel, Millennium TV, Last Source Magazine, Spice Radio, Explore Asian, Multicultural Helping House Society, and World Poetry, where I probably first got uh, inspired to do peace poems. Also, we have to thank this, the wonderful workers here, the auditorium staff, including sound and light technicians, photographers, and videographers. As well, thanks to the directors, coordinators, and volunteers of our own Vancouver Tagore Society. But I think I'll add a welcoming cheer for all those amazing performers who are going to delight us tonight. Welcome. I have uh, two poems from uh, this, my 10th book, which is called Small Acts, uh, in the sense that it's that reaching hand out to help a stranger uh, that makes new friendships and starts a little bit of peace around you. 
And the first one is to a universal uh, ingredient in our lives. Water has no boundaries. Seashore or lakeside waters, never still, nary a pattern repeating have calmed, even inspired many a writer, musician, artist. Knowing the water cycle data, writers dream about who shared this handful, now sliding so easily between fingers, of who swam in these clear molecules near Miami, who licked some as Tokyo raindrops, who showered in waterfalls in Nepal, or swallowed others in scotch whiskey, either with mixer, but always with ice. <clears throat> this is the basic stuff of our bodies. We are all mostly water. This never-ending globe-wide fluid is the birthplace of all our life forms, began as one-cell beings a trillion eons ago. Now this earth-spanning ocean, which drops were once drunk by cave dwellers, <clears throat> atoms of water recycled by each generation around the globe, except for a few drops that were maybe left on the moon by that NASA team. Water is indivisible. It's our one world shared resource. Uh, of course, when I read that to school children, they're totally amazed that water is recycled, truly. Something that's out there in our Pacific Ocean now may end up in a few months, due to storms and clouds, those drops may end up in the Indian Ocean. <clears throat> and now that we've had this lovely spring and how many of you have been walking through pink blossoms because of the tens of thousands of uh, cher uh, cherry trees that we have blooming uh, earlier, uh, and I think just the whole idea of things growing again in the spring uh, led me to write this poem which sort of looks at love being the most powerful emotion in life. It helps, love is the thing that helps us get through life. And um, it may start out uh, rather lighthearted for some of you. Intoxicated again, it's my old friendly foe leading me into fantasy land where only lovers live. Where all is rewarding, perfect as far as the horizon, always lit with breathtaking sunrises and sunsets. As the days of intense emotion roll over one another in some delightful conquest to achieve ultimate pleasure. I, I'm happily trapped in my love addiction, still in that crazy teen stage, can't get enough. As we feast on one another, insatiable in our sharing. But my addiction lover and I are both starving in a world that scorns affection that fights commitment, so afraid of love, unable to give or receive the pure power of love, that unconditional, <clears throat> that unconditional covenant taught by our spirit God. I, I wrestle loose and, and try to stay away from love's promises of forever happiness? I question the impossible gift from strangers. Yet, we get help and health as we travel the road to Damascus on our path to the future. Thank you. <clears throat>